Father, Son, Holy Spirit, come now. God, we need you. God, I'm calling on you. God, fall on this video, on this earth, in this atmosphere. Come now. I need you, Holy Spirit. I'm calling on you. Good day, guys. Good day, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to Grace Ministries USA. USA, baby. My name is Ryan. Here at Grace Ministries USA, we put up a daily devotional to help you think more clearly in these insane times. Feel better about things that are happening around us in our world by living the way we were meant to live through Jesus Christ, our author of salvation, our creator, y'all. Don't believe the lies culture tells you about Jesus. They're garbage, hot garbage, that the Bible lost meaning in translation. Lie, that Christians are weak, passive, lie that we don't that we don't that we don't need god we just need the next fill in the blank lies just lies man we've been lied to by the media by culture by leaders that's why we don't look to man you cannot serve two masters you cannot serve the world people and God at the same time. So you either live for yourself and the approval of everyone else and what they think and what they want and what they consider for your life, or you surrender your will. You surrender your will to the one that made you, to the creator of the world, the creator of the universe, God. We get to choose. That's the gospel. That's Jesus. It's not forced. It's your decision through love. Now that is love, guys. Today's devotional. And now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. Because he is coming back. You can count on that. The signs are everywhere and the prize is just not for me but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing second timothy 4 8 tells us all about it it isn't enough to start well in the race of life right we it's we need to finish well it isn't enough to run fast we need to run fast and long this is a long distance run and the goal is to make it across that freaking finish line. As the Apostle Paul neared the end of his race, he wrote to Timothy, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race and I have remained faithful. 2 Timothy 4, 7. The Bible is filled with the stories of so many who had tremendous potential, y'all, but they crashed and burned in the spiritual race. Life beat them up and they couldn't handle it. They gave up. There was King Saul who had incredible potential, yet he disobeyed God repeatedly, I might add. <laughs> That'd be me. <laughs> he allowed pride into his life, which gave way to paranoia and jealousy that ultimately consumed him destroyed him he essentially wrote his own <laughs> eulogy man when he said i have been a fool and very wrong first samuel 26 21 he had all kinds of regret then there was samson with his incredible ability to vanquish his enemies on one occasion this dude is so bad he killed a thousand Philistines with a jawbone of a donkey, y'all. <laughs> Yet, what happened to Samson? That dude went down in flames. That's what, that's what happened. You know why? Because he played around with sin. And sin ultimately play, played around with him. 
culminating in his own death. Gideon had such humble beginnings, yet God mightily used him to conquer his enemies. On fire in the beginning, but as his life came to an end, he lowered his standards and fell into an immorality and pride. He stopped engaging God in his word. These people started well, but they didn't finish well. You see, they ran fast in the beginning, but they didn't get across the finish line as they should have, as you should have, as I should have. We got to tighten up, man. This is real. We are in the fight of our life. Paul wanted to be in the company of those who finished the race. Men like Caleb, Joshua in the Old Testament who finished it well, I might add. Bad dudes. Hebrews 12 tells us, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips, trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. So how do we do this? By keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Verse 1 through 2. Guys, we are running this race not for applause, not for notoriety, but for God, y'all. Power in that. We run this race so that we can hear Jesus say on that final day, well done, good and faithful servant. Looking to Jesus keeps us going because we get discouraged. We are humans. We are sheep, man. We are sheep. People can let us down. They can disappoint us. That's why we must keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. That's why we need a good shepherd. We need guidance, help. In the ancient Greek games, ancient Greek games, a judge would stand at the finish line holding laurel leaves. The reward given to the victor in plain sight of everybody else. As the runners came across the last stretch, tired, exhausted, they could see that prize waiting. They could see the prize awaiting the winner. And no doubt, a new burst of energy kicked in. This is a long distance race, y'all. We're going to be running for a while. So keep running. And if you're slowing down, it's time to speed up. Reignite that passion. It's time to move forward because you are leaving a legacy. And you're doing it in your name for God's purposes. In his name and will and purpose. What is done on earth will be done in heaven. You see, God is real. He's here now. I invited him in in the beginning of the devotional. I walk with him daily. I'm in his presence because I engage him. Wake up and get in his word. I go to bed listening to abide meditation, hallow meditation. Go ahead, pay for the whole year and just meditate on God's word and goodness. And when you do, your life will change in ways that you never thought possible. That is my prayer and my hope for you. This is not condemnation. This is love. This is God speaking through me to whoever's listening and watching, trying to reach you as well at the same way he used Pastor Bert to reach me, Pastor Bert's son to reach me, right? It's a, it's a, it's a process. We're all hands and feet of Jesus and we need each other, but we also need God. That's the secret. And it's not easy. We have to wake up and choose it. Instead of waking up and looking at the phone, Pick up the Bible first. Read one verse. Read one verse. I'm studying Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. And then I'll think about that. The Lord is my shepherd. 
I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Puts me on the right path for his name's sake. I'm trying to memorize it, but anyhow, I'm just giving an example, y'all. That's all. It's for love. It's out of love. And I wasn't always this way. It took me a long time, 43 years to get to this point. So give yourself some grace. Give yourself some love. Give yourself some mercy and pick up some hope along the way. And let's go into 2024 swinging and running that race, baby. Have a great day. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Give us a thumbs up, a subscribe. If we've said anything that added any type of value to your life, we appreciate it. We're trying to reach people in the name of Jesus, but we don't want you know, hostages, right? As coach Tomlin says, we're looking for volunteers. So if you want to help us out, cool. Give us a thumbs up, a subscribe. If you don't, whatever, dude. See ya. God bless you.